Hi everyone and welcome to another video from Colour with Claire. Today I'm going to be showing you how to colour snow. Now this is something that's been requested from quite a lot of you and um, we're going to have a go at it today. It's super super easy, um, the way that I do it anyway. Obviously this isn't the best way to colour snow, it's not the only way to colour snow, it's just my way of colouring snow. So if you like it, uh, fantastic, please try it out, um, tag me in your photos and um, let me know what you think of it. So it's very, 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 very simple. Um, all you're really going to need is a very light shade of blue. And in Prismacolor pencils, um, there are three different shades that you could use. We've got sky blue light, powder blue and cloud blue. So these are like the three blues that really... Um, that really help when you're colouring snow because they're so light and they're so icy, but they are very different in tone when you actually swatch them out. Hopefully you'll be able to see, if I just zoom in a little bit, just over here. So this is the cloud blue. Now this is a very light, almost gray blue, very uh, cold and icy. This is the powder blue. And hopefully you can see straight away that this is a much warmer blue a lot brighter and then this one is the sky blue light which is again a warm blue but it's lighter than the previous one so really it just depends on what um what warmth you want to go with with your snow what kind of color it's t it's totally up to you but you could use any of these three so um let's go with let's go with the middle one which i think yeah, is this one that's powder blue. Just move these to the side. So I've got a snowman here, as you can see. Um, so this would obviously be all white. Now I'm going to take my powder blue and I'm going to consciously leave a small gap of a couple of millimetres between the black line and where we're going to start. So you take your pencil, leave in that white gap and you just follow the contour of the edge of the snowman. Now leaving that white gap gives it the look of um, being rounded. So instead of colouring straight up to the edge, we leave that gap and it sort of make, it makes it look like the light is hitting this area, but then there's also more behind it. So it gives that rounded look. I'm not, you know, professional on these things. I don't know the terminology, but it seems to work for me. So that's how I do it. So you're doing the edges in a quite crisp line. And let's do this other edge as well. Exactly the same principle. It might be handy for you if you turn your book around when you're doing this because it's really hard to get that curve um, when you're sort of twisting your hand around. It's much easier here. So um, but for the purpose of the demonstration, I'm not going to do that. But when you're doing it, it might be a lot easier just to turn your book around and keep rotating it so that you can get that um, comfortable curvature on it. So just trying to keep it as smooth as possible. So any sort of jaggedness, we want to try and buff that away and make it look really soft. So I'm going to come up here as well. Try and keep the amount of space that you're leaving consistent, if you can. That just gives it a better look. Uh, okay, so once you've done your contour like that, you then start to very lightly, extremely light pressure, bring it out a little bit. So you're coming from the line that you've put down, but you're using very light pressure now, just to softly bring it further in to the center. So obviously snow is white. Um, and there's not really a lot you can do about it in colouring. Same with colouring penguins, they're black and white, it's very difficult, but um, there are ways that you can do little touches like this. So we're not, we're not colouring barely any space at all, but it's just this little touch 
that makes the eye sort of tricked into thinking that it is a 3D um, shape rather than just a flat white on the page. So you just keep trickling that colour in very, very lightly until you're basically not touching the page at all. So as lightly as you can. Now at this stage, if you wanted, you can blend it with some blending solution. You could use a white pencil. I might even do that in a second if you wanted to get it really, really smooth. So I'm just doing exactly the same over here. Keeping that curvature going, it's very important. Okay, and then over here. You can go in, you know, keep going in if you're not happy with the with the smoothness of the blend or what have you, but what we're basically looking for is just a very, very soft outline. So you can use any pencil sets that you've got. You don't have to use Prismacolor, they're just my pencil of choice. Um, there are plenty of pencil sets out there that have very, very light blues. So whatever you have to work with, as long as you can find the lightest blue possible, you'll be fine. You could even try a very cool purple, um, one that's got a lot more blue in it than red, and see how that looks. So I'm doing this in real time so that you can see every single stroke that I'm making. Don't want to speed up these tutorials all the time because you want to be able to actually see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to bring this out slightly more down here. I don't want there to be a definitive line and then your light, light areas. We want it to all blend in as best as possible. So once you're happy you're going to end up with something that looks like that. Now obviously this doesn't look amazing yet because the rest of the picture isn't filled in. So once you've actually done all of the picture this is really going to stand out because all the white will be a massive contrast against everything else. At the moment, there's no contrast, but once you've finished the picture, it will really bounce off that and the snow will be really, really obvious. Um, so it's really something that becomes apparent when you actually finish the whole page. It's much like when you do um, skin, skin tones. It doesn't look right until you've colored the rest of the person. Um, so that is how I would do um, a snowman so you're just following the curvature of the snowman uh, you could also use pastel if you wanted to so um, let's say on this big area at the bottom of the snowman here obviously these are going to be slightly different colors I think this is a lot warmer um, but we're just going to put a bit of pastel around the edge exactly the same as what we've just done with the pencil so I'm not massively proficient in pastels, but we'll give it a go because pastels are really soft and it's just that kind of thing that we want to create with snow is that softness. So obviously these aren't going to look great together, but this is just options that you can use. So when you've put a bit of pastel down, you can get yourself a little cotton bud or a Q-tip and just go over the line you've just done and it will really soften and it's very very quick and easy this method so if you're looking for something that's not going to take time with pencils even though that doesn't take a lot of time if you're looking for something quicker and something that blends easier let's say pastels are perfect so you just carry on going around depending what brand of pastels you've got it might take a little bit more um 
more application of pastel to get the, the right depth of colour. I'm using Prismacolor New Pastel. And you just keep going. You can be quite hard with your Q-tip to really soften it out. You can use your fingertips, but I find that these are much easier to control, um, sort of tinier spaces. And that is pretty much it. You can keep going, you can sort of dab um, dab your Q-tip onto your pastel like this and get a bit more that you can work with. Totally up to you how you do it. I would probably, with that being quite a large area, bring in the blue a little more. Obviously, you will take your time with this. You'll experiment whatever looks best for you. And it might not be a snowman that you're colouring. It could just be um, a snowy roof or snow on the ground or falling snow. And you'll end up with something that looks like that. So something that's just basically soft and blue. That's what you're looking for. Now, as I just said, there are different things that you can colour that are snow. So snow on the branches of this tree for example and now this is another little tip and technique that I use so remember how I said not to go straight up to the lines with this to leave a bit of a gap so on this one to say this big area here that's covered in snow what I'm going to do is I'm not going to leave a gap I'm just going to colour straight up to that black line and I'm using rounded scumbling motions with this just to colour a line of blue straight across where that snow has fallen onto the tree. Make sure it's nice and soft still so it's it's blending out up upwards so it's darker at the bottom more pressure and then it just gets lighter as you go further up all you're doing is changing your hand pressure. There's no technique in this. Just change your hand pressure and it will get softer as you go toward the top. Now, you can leave it like that if you want. It looks fine to me, it would look brilliant. Obviously when it's all done, it's gonna to look totally different. It's gonna look way better than this. Um, but if you wanted to, you could then come in with either a white gel pen or a Posca pen or even white acrylic paint anything that you've got like that and what I do is I go over the black line now I'm sort of dotting this on because I want it to look very stippled or dappled um, to imitate snow because snow is not straight, you know, it's made up of millions of little flakes. So we're just dappling it on. Now, your black line will probably show underneath. It depends how opaque the pen that you're using is. But you can always go back over and fill in those bits that you, uh, that you can still see. So just keep stippling. And now when you actually come to colour the tree itself, probably should have coloured this entire thing before I did this tutorial and then you would be able to see how good it looks at the end. Um, but when you come to colour the, the actual green of the tree or what have you, this will really, really show up um, this dotting that you're doing with your white pen and you'll be able to get a sort of texture and, and dimension when you do this it gives it texture so when you're at school you probably did rendering and different textures cross hatching and things like that um, and this is how to create texture so for snow it works absolutely perfectly and as I say once you've coloured the green it's really going to have the contrast that it's something different at the moment it's all white so we're not seeing that contrast but when we have for instance green down here and green up here and then the snow dotted on it it will look a lot better trust me 
Um, so that's basically how I colour snow. You can do it with pastels, you can do it with uh, pencils of any kind. I bet you can even do it with markers. Let's see if I can grab a alcohol marker that's really light. Let's just see, I'm literally just picking these from my collection. So I'm picking greens at the moment, which look blue. <laughs> Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's try duck egg. Oh, that's well green. Right, okay, bear with me because this is not something I've actually planned, as you can tell. Uh, let's try this one. Oh, so this is okay. So a very, very light marker. This is a Spectra Noir Illustrator in Pearl Blue, TB1. Uh, let's just see what happens. Now I haven't got anything to put underneath it. Let me just use this bit of foam that came out of my pastel box just for now. Uh, so alcohol markers, as you know, do bleed through pretty much everything. So you do have to be careful. So I'm just following that contour again. Uh, you can go under the hat if you want. It's totally up to you. Maybe let's do a little bit here or... Well, I'll just follow it around. I probably wouldn't have done under the hat, really. <laughs> but we've committed to it now. Now, let's bring it down, taper it in a little bit. Now, I'm not, again, I'm not proficient with much, really, but <laughs> I'm definitely not proficient with alcohol blending pens. But let's see what happens, because this is an experiment for me as well as you. If we put on a bit of a blender pen, will it blend? Will it do anything at all? We will see. Okay, so it looks like it's pushing the blue back a little bit and blending it a little. We do have to wait for that to completely dry because the alcohol will evaporate and we won't see any lines or anything that you can see at the moment. But it does look like it has blended it a little bit maybe if we just go over that it'll look a bit better um yeah so you can do it with alcohol markers obviously you'll need a little bit more practice if you're not uh, very good at it like me but there's loads of ways there's loads of ways you can do it all you need is a very light blue so i really really hope that this tutorial has helped you somewhat even though it's super super simple like everything i bring to you it is so so easy to do um, and please let me know in the comments what you thought of it even if you thought it was rubbish just let me know um, but do click the thumbs up if you liked it because that really helps my videos get seen by others and uh, anything else you'd like to know just let me know and I will see you soon on Colour with Claire